Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And in today's episode, we are kicking off our Series 11 content on the channel. Now, the rules on the Rank Ladder have updated to Series 11. If you're wondering what the rule set is, it's pretty much Series 8 that we've reverted back to, but it's now coined Series 11. All the details will be linked down in the description. There'll be a link over to Cerebi where you can check out all the rule changes. Pretty much in a nutshell, it is Dynamax is back. We are allowed one restricted Pokemon per team. So that's your Zacian, your Calyrex, your Kyogre Groudon sort of stuff. And then national decks on top of that, as long as they have the battle ready mark and uh, all the Galar symbol you know then they are eligible to be played in the format so as i say all the details will be linked down in the description if you're a bit sketchy about that but this week we are kicking off with a bunch of teams normally what i do at the start of a series is just upload like a bunch of sample teams for you to try but this week sample teams are going to be broken down into five videos over this week we're going to be starting off with zash in them tomorrow we'll have Groudon. after that we'll have kyoga we'll have shadow rider and then we'll round the week up with eveltal now these rental codes when I put sample codes up before, I can keep them up for two weeks, but we do a lot of cycling with new teams on the channel, so they tend to go down quite quickly. So I'm going to keep these up for the first four weeks of the new format. If you'd like to see, try them out, you've got a lot of time to kind of play around with them, get some ideas and get used to the new format. As I say, I'll be releasing one of these every day this week so make sure you check out the videos as we go through this week today as you see we are kicking off with zashin so we can take a quick look at the team this is the overview this is the rental code and uh, we'll have a couple of games with the team as we always do pilot it and then we'll finish up with the rental code at the end of the episode and that'll be the same for subsequent days throughout this week for the sample teams that we'll be throwing up to give you guys a little bit of a helping hand getting started back into this format especially if you haven't played it before so you can see we've got zashin um, with the substitute, the Sacred Sword Ironhead, that reverts into uh, Behemoth Blade, obviously, when it does hit the field, because it's got the Rusted Sword, um, and it hits its crown form. Uh, then we got Landris with the Lumberry. Obviously, we've now got more threats like Venusaur in the format that have things like Sleep Powder, so um, Under the Sun... Landorus can be a little bit kind of threatened by that. The Lumberry kind of alleviates that, gets rid of burn issues and things like that as well. Um, so that's the Landorus, pretty offensive on this team. Then we've got Thunderous, it's coming back. Dynamax is back. Uh, Defiant Thunder is going to play a big role, especially because what teams will tend to do against Zashian is drop Intimidates onto the field Intimidate cycle. With the Defiant there, really can punish teams, so you've got that ability to uh, take advantage of Thunderous in that respect. And with the Assault Vest, especially when it's Dynamax, it's going to be able to take hits a lot better. We've got Grimmsnarl, just to shore up the team's kind of stability with the screens there, the priority pranks the screens with that Light Clear. Got Spirit Break as well to lower and disrupt uh, opposing uh, special attackers by lowering a special attack um, and then scary face for a little bit of speed control and then we got a Torkoal in here uh, it does bring the sun to the team gives us a way to disrupt weather uh, gives us a way to disrupt as well with yawn uh, and then we got body press burning jealousy as well which can catch things out and burn them if they are boosting now Dynamax is back and then wrapping up with Venusaur just down in the corner here which plays super well with Torkoal with that chlorophyll ability going with the weakness policy because we've got the screens there from the Grimmsnarl so we can really set up some stability behind those screens get Venusaur protected uh, along with things like Intimidate gonna help it out there and then really take advantage of that weakness policy boost once we've got it so that is a team in a nutshell friends as I say just a quick overview there's a rental code we'll round up with that at the end of the episode and uh, without further ado we'll get into game one of today's video okay so first up we have Geordie and they're playing a team of Rillaboom, Incineroar, Dragapult, Colossal, Zashian and Urshifu so you're pretty stacked Standard kind of colossal team now Dynamax is back it's quite a good one for us to kick off with today because it's quite fitting uh, we're gonna see a lot of colossal kind of come back into the format now um, so really we've got to really utilize Landorus here we've got to be very careful around something like the Urshifu that can cause us a lot of issues especially because it can hit through protect um, but Landorus in general are gonna be a very good mon against things like Colossal, against things like uh, the Rillaboom that is probably going to come, um, the Incineroar again. Got to be careful around things like the Dragapult that can potentially burn us, but with the Lumberry, like I mentioned in the kind of overview of the team at the start, it does help against that. Now it's just deciding on what our last Pokemon would be. Um, like Torkoal might not be too bad here, to be honest, because it 
it can beat the Zashin outright. It's just, yeah, uh, the Urshifu makes it a little bit difficult, but with Yawn, I think it gives us a few options. So we'll lock in with the Torkoal. Um, and then, you know, against Colossal, always going to be, always going to be a very hard matchup. Always going to be a hard matchup. So you've got to try and lead right. And if your opponent kind of guesses that you're going to lead into the Colossal lead with something like Landorus and kind of adjusts for that, it puts you in the back, like the back foot straight away. But we don't see that, fortunately. We just see the, uh, the Dragapult come out. <clears throat> with the Colossal. So you can expect here like Surf um, from the Dragapult and then the Colossal to get its big G-Max move off. Um, now we've got a couple of options here where we could potentially just light screen and then go for something like um, the Max Ground Attack. Um, or we could potentially go Max Fly into Dragapult get the speed boost. I'm probably better off just max quaking into Colossal, to be honest. It's just like whether or not they switch out the Colossal at this point. That's the big thing, you know. Um, you've got to always worry about that. Um, but uh, it's just if they go for the burn here, we've got one Lumberry that we can kind of get around with, right? But it makes it difficult to kind of get the jump on the Dragapult the following turn, which is... Um, a little bit frustrating because you've always got to worry about Will-O-Wisp. You've got to worry about Brick and Swipe as well from Dragapult. Um, so it could be quite an easy play for my opponent just to switch the Colossal out at this point. Uh, go for the Will-O-Wisp into the Landorus. And it, that, at that stage you're kind of thinking maybe I go after the Dragapult there. But then it leaves the potential Colossal left unchecked. Which is not always the best thing. And that's what makes this team quite very deadly deadly to play against deadly yeah it makes it difficult to play against you know because it's got so much flexibility so many options um, and we've seen it through previous series how well it's done kind of taken how many three out of four players cups three out of four has it i don't know it's taken a lot anyway okay so colossal gonna go for its g max we get the light screen up which is gonna help us against colossal not going to help us too much if it is a physical variant because that is something that we uh, you have to think about as well. As we see the um, the surf come out, we'll proc the uh, steam engine and the weakness policy. Wow, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen this or played in an environment where anything like this has been going on. It's been pretty tame in, in Series 10 the last few months, but uh, now it's back. It's a good one for us to kick off with for sure, but uh, that light screen really helping us out a bunch here. And we're going to be able to remove the Colossal straight away, which is the main thing for us, you know. Um, the light screen support from Grimmsnarl really helps out here. Gives us that special defense boost as well, so we've got that further kind of boost. We've just got to worry now about something like the Urshifu coming in, which is going to cause us a bunch of issues, um, along with the Dragapult. Because we're not in that position where I was talking about before where we want that speed boost to get the jump on something like Dragapult. Because that's really uh, then giving us a bit more of an upper hand where we can go straight after something like the Urshifu if we need to. Um, but I guess we still have a few options open to us. So let's see. Like the Dragapult's not going to be able to knock out... Um, the Landorus. The Zashin probably probably not either to be honest behind uh, we can reflect got to think about our options now what we've we got in the back we've got to run Zashin to come in like we really want to get the speed boost that that would be the big thing uh, Max Airstream but we're not then touching the Zashin, kind of leaving it alone again. And that's where the problem lies, you know. Do we allow it to get the sub up? Do we allow it to um, <laughs> get a sword stance off? I think we airstream into Dragapult, and I think we just go for a reflect here. Because we may say sub to burn the, the max turns. We may say will o wisp as well. Just going for the Behemoth Blade. Has it gone into Grimmsnarl? You're likely to, I think. You go after the Landorus. I think you're going after Grimmsnarl. Well, that will take us down, but that opens the door for either our own Zashin to come in or our own Torkoal. Now, it's likely that we get burned here. But the speed... Okay, break and swipe. We'll take that all day long. But this is what I was talking about with the, the max airstreams. We need to be in that position where we can now get Azashin onto the field. Um, 
And then we've got the option to go for another max airstream this next turn. And we could double into the, the Zashian on the opposing side of the field if we want. Especially if Dragapult's relying on break and swipe. It's not really something that we need to worry about too much. Um, or we could just go for... Yeah, we could. I mean, we could go for Max Quake into the, the Zashian as well. It's not a bad play. I mean, we're probably better off going Max Airstream into... And then Behemoth Blade into the Zashian. I think double up into it. There's always a risk here of it protecting, of course. But if we got the fastest Zashian, it, it makes things a lot easier for us to manage, for sure. And they do go Substitute. Now, the Airstream's not going to be able to break this sub, which is not great. But then we do have... That speed boost. Oh, they've got Will-O-Wisp as well. Oh, oh, oh. oh Will-O-Wisp and Break and Swipe. That that makes things a lot more difficult for us, for sure. Um, yeah. We should be able to break this sub. And then we've got a turn where we can Earthquake the next turn. <clears throat> you got to remember as well, we still have Torkoal in the back. And it's unlikely that I think they've got... I don't think they have Incineroar. Because I think you would have brought maybe Incineroar in before now. Yeah, and we've got the residual damage to kind of chip away at us. So you've got to think it's maybe Urshifu in the back. Which makes it a little bit more difficult, especially with Torkoal. Um, Wincon for us is definitely... If it's Rillaboom, of course... But then you've got to worry about Rillaboom coming in and weakening our Earthquake now, which would be the, the big thing. Uh, so I think we do just Earthquake at this point, and I think we just protect the Zashin. And hope Rillaboom doesn't hit the field. Because although an Earthquake probably won't take down the opposing Zashin, it's going to put it in a range where Substitute probably not a possibility anymore. And it'll do a good chunk of damage to the Dragapult as well. So, let's see. Oh, it does take the Zashin down. That's massive. It's huge. Critical hit. Okay. That's pretty big for us. That's huge for us, really. Um, what are we going to see? I mean, we are minus one. We have to remember that. The break and swipe did come out into the Landorus. So, this will put us down to minus two. So, that, that crit is absolutely massive for us. Um, and whether it would have put the Zashin in sub-range is even questionable, you know? Urshifu is still going to be really obnoxious to kind of deal with. Um, although the sun will kind of help out with that. And we do have Yawn, so we can put it to sleep. We can get rid of the, the Dragapult the next turn with Zashin. Um, but it is Incineral. Okay, well that's 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 super fine. We just have to... Um, I mean, we can't protect. We can't protect, which is a, a little bit annoying. Um... But I don't think they got a way to knock out Zashin. Yeah, so they either fake us out or we get to play another turn. So we just body press here and we go for the Behemoth Blade into the Dragapult. So they have to fake out Zashin here to save the Dragapult, really. Um, and then Torkoal 1-on-1 one one versus the Incineroar is an easy matchup. I'm surprised it was the Incineroar in the back, to be honest. But minus... Oh, is this going to be... It should be enough. It should still be enough to take the Dragapult down. Yeah, it is. Like, we're burnt and then the Intimidate on top of that. So, like, minus three. That stack. But it's going to be enough. There's the Flare Blitz coming out into Zashian. And then the Recoil. That'll just help us along the way with Body Press here. For Tokol to kind of clean up. Now, we do get lucky. We do get lucky with uh, that critical hit. But I think... Even without the crit, if we're at a point where we can get rid of the Dragapult, then Torkoal can kind of clean up the Zashin and the Incineroar by itself, just because they're not going to be able to really put any amount of damage onto Torkoal that they really need to. Um, so, potentially we would have been okay, I think. Gauge what the, the damage is here, and I mean, yeah, you can see it's just not, not even anywhere near enough where it needs to be. As the body press comes out, so good game to... Yori or Jordi, however pronouncing it, could be either. Um, but yeah, at least we're off to a good start with the team. Like I said, we do get a little bit lucky with the crit, but you got to take it when you get them um, because sometimes 
it's going to go the other way for you and you have to kind of take that on the chin as well so kick off against a colossal team uh, a nice one for us to kick off with and we'll jump straight into game two of today's episode okay up next we've got kenzumo and they are playing a team of lapras zashin amungus landorus thunderous and dragapult so this is kind of like your zashian lapras team a lot of these picked up a lot of popularity the last time this series is kind of in effect um you're probably looking at mm, i i want to lean towards a more support of thunderous but again i could see it being offensive here as well you've got the kind of trick room cover in amoongus here uh you're going to have the lapras as your main g max pokemon that's going to be able to get the screens up and uh, make life difficult for everything else on our team i think screens for for us is going to be really really helpful although is it something that we kind of want to lead off with you've got to worry about the dragapult though as well if we go with something like venus or Torkoal, and then if we go down the venus or route you've got to worry because you've got things like thunderous and landorus that both threaten uh, pretty pretty heavily so we could potentially just go grimmsnarl zashin um it's whether or not we want Landorus in this. I don't really feel like Landorus is going to be amazing. Um, I think Torkoal Venusaur on the back might be a better way to go. Um, and kind of rely on that weakness policy. Venusaur, once we've got the screen set up, we can put a bit of pressure on with Zash in early game. And slow the game down a little bit. Because they're going to get their screens up. And then they're going to try and start and whittle us down. But if we can kind of stall out their max turns and then get Venusaur in in a good spot then we're not going to be in too bad a position but again got to worry about things like um Dragapult with Will-O-Wisp uh you're going to have Max Quake potentially coming out from the Landorus which is going to be very annoying to deal with um and with the Intimidate coming out there, it's not ideal. But we can reflect this first turn. And I think what we'll probably do is just reflect and then switch into Torko here. Because Torko behind the Reflect will be able to take the Max Quake pretty well. It'll be able to kind of soak up uh, Will-O-Wisp if we see that from the Dragapult. Because this Zashin is not going to be outspeed in Max Speed Dragapult. That's the big problem. We've slowed it down, bulked it out. Which you can kind of afford to do with Zashin. Um, but you've got to bear in mind if you're doing that sort of thing. You gotta bear in mind that you are gonna be susceptible to things like Spectre max speed, um, things like Dragon Ball max speed, all all things that carry like Will O Wisp and those threats to shut down these big physical threats. So we get Talk Hall out. Get that sun up on the field. We will get our reflect up, and we are gonna see a max from our opponent. And like this goes back to the the whole thing, you know, you wanna try and really slow down your opponent when they click that max button and um, make life as difficult as you can for them to pick up knockouts because if they're not getting the returns with their their max pokemon then you know they're not then they're, they're not going to be in a position where they're going to be able to kind of close things down as well as what you would uh, as well as they want to so we are going to see airstream come out from the dragapult going to give that speed boost it's going to be into the grim snarl be interesting to see what the land risk goes for here um they're going to be special maybe you see a life orb on the dragapult and it is gone for the sword stance wow okay okay hmm gotta watch out for max phantasm as well because that is going to be something that's really obnoxious to kind of deal with the one thing we could potentially do is go burning jealousy here um could go scary face reset the speed boost on the landorus and then go burn in jealousy because if they get any boosts here which would they're likely to do the only drawback would be if they go max phantasm here um whereas if we go scary face they're kind of probably more inclined to go for the speed boost the next turn whereas if we protect here we go scary face into the landorus they go max phantasm here then the next turn they're probably thinking right well we need to get that speed boost back for landorus um, we can potentially scary face again if Grim Snarl can hang on this turn. And there's a Max Phantasm. Since a Grim Snarl. Okay. And I think they got. Are they going Earthquake? Are they going for a, another really, really greedy, greedy Soul Stance again? What are we going to see? It's just going to be Rock Slide. Behind the Reflect, can we take it? 
Can we take it, Grimstar? No. No, we can't. Okay. Well. This is the thing they have to go for. The airstream here. We could bait them into an airstream. Yeah, we could bait them into airstream with Venusaur. And go burning jealousy. Because I think we'll take an attack from the Landorus anyway. I just don't see them going for an earthquake. And I think we just burn in jealousy here. So I think they go airstream. Maybe rock slide again. The worry would be if they go airstream fly. That would be that wouldn't be ideal. So there's the airstream. Yeah, is Ashen gonna take that pretty well? We gotta hope it's not earthquake. If it's Earthquake, we're kind of like screwed. We're, we're screwed, pretty much. <laughs> um, but the Burn of Jealousy, we'll get the Burn of both, which... Ah, they're going to fly. Okay, that's not ideal. But we get the Burn onto the Dragapult, which is which is good. And then the next turn, um, the Landorus will outspeed Zashin. So we'll be able to get it with Behemoth Blade the next turn, which is, which is still all right. You know, it's not the end of the world. Um, and we're going to be able to get... Probably want to switch Torkoal out now to... I mean, we don't necessarily need to. We could yawn. Let's see. Have they got Incineroar? They haven't got Incineroar. So, we can definitely get the Behemoth Blade. And then we could get Venusaur onto the field. Let's see what the Dragapult goes for. The worst thing is if it's got Will-O-Wisp, which I'm hoping it hasn't. It's got darts. Okay, so Venus are going to take two darts, which isn't good. But we're going to see the fly from the Landorus into Zashin. Oh, we're actually outspeed the Landorus! No way. I thought it would outspeed us. I thought it would outspeed us. Okay, well, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, we can just max Venus or now. Um... I think we just double into Landorus here. I don't really worry about the Dragapult at this point. I think we just double the Landorus. And Venusaur is going to 100% outspeed that, that Lando. From this range anyway. Dragapult withdrawing. See the thing is like Landorus could potentially have protect as well like uh, is it gonna have protect I don't think so I think it's got we've seen sword stance fly we haven't seen earthquake it's got that for sure and then um, and rock slide so I think the double up here we're gonna get the lander start that residual damage which is really good for us the dragapult's speed has been negated as well now so yeah And because they haven't got the Intimidate, like, now active. Yeah, we get the Behemoth Blade. This will be plus one. It'll be enough to get the Lando. And then, like I say, that Residual Damage is kind of starting now. we still got the Reflect up as well, which is good. Um, and although the Sun might be running out. I've got one more. I don't know if it's there. So we might want to think about switching in Torkoal this next turn. Although the, the, the Thunderous, to be honest... Is kind of in that predicament where it has to either go wild charge um, I can't go fly I can't go fly and we could just switch in Torkoal to be honest that's probably the best thing for us to do at this point with now the Zashin coming in we just go Torkoal and we just go max quake um, get the speed boost get the jump on the Zashin pick up the knockout well we're not gonna knock out the Zashin I don't think there's no way we knock out the Zashin. But the Zashin gonna be solo health anyway, and then with the residual damage on top of that, our own Zashin can kind of come in and clean up Dragapult, Thunderous, Zashin on its own. So we'll see 
what we're doing. And this just goes to show, like, I think, like, how impactful these residual attacks are, you know. Again, it kind of plays back to that first game where we had the Colossal there with that residual damage, the, the weakness policy, the... Um, it's crazy steam engine ability and then you're getting like you are seeing why Venusaur is also such a good Pokemon in this format as well with its chlorophyll, its residual damage, its coverage that it's got you know they're all things I think you know you've got to expect in this format and, and have ways to to deal with. Zashun probably goes into Venusaur here to be honest um, I don't know if it'll be enough behind the reflect but I'm, I don't really know what to expect from the Thunderous other than maybe a wild charge that's a lot of damage isn't it that's a lot of damage, there's the fly. You've got to expect his Ashen to maybe protect this next turn. Um, whereas we, we can just max guard here and go. I mean, we don't even need to. I think we just burn in jealousy at this point and max guard. Venusaur, just avoid the fly. Yeah, they're going to switch Ashen out, try and keep it for later on. Um, I don't know if a burning jealousy will be in. No, no, I definitely won't. Maybe with. Uh, I don't think so. Not even with the residual damage here. We do get the max guard off though, so that'll block that fly attack from the thunderous. Drops it back down onto the field, and uh, we'll get a burning jealousy from the Toko. Boosted by the sun, did some decent damage. Yeah, it's not really enough, is it? It's not enough at all. We do get the crit as well on that dragapult, but the uh, the residual damage here chipping away at everything pretty nicely. Um, and like I say, we don't really need to worry too much about the Thunderous at this point. I think we can just probably go Earth Power into the Dragapult. It kind of covers his Ash and switch back in. If we're worried about that, and then we can just go for another Burning, burning Jealousy into that uh, Thunderous. We do have Sleep Powder as well, but I don't think we need to risk the Sleep Powder when we can pick up the Knockout onto the Dragapult, which could, you know, cause us a few issues. So there's the Earth Power. Picking up the knockout there, and are we going to just see another fly? Potentially. Now, wild charge this time into Torkoal, so they're going to get recoil damage as well. Um, Burn Jealousy, I think, probably picks up the knockout now, single target with the sun. Ooh, no, but the residual damage doing the job for us, so yeah, we've got Zash in left, and uh, with Venusaur in the sun with that chlorophyll, uh, the reflect has gone, but against Torkoal as well. It's it's pretty difficult for my opponent to kind of come back at this point. So, Zashin coming in. Nice shiny one. I still haven't picked up my shiny Zashin yet. I need to go and get a cord before that expires. Um, but in this team, we've just got the regular old boring Zashin. Not boring, is it? But it'd be nice to have the shiny one. I should have I should have done that, but I haven't had a chance to get into town to do that recently got a lot going on at home so and other stuff going on so which has meant i haven't been able to get out to the shop but very good game to my opponent there um i think we've had two decent games with the team today kind of showcase how well it can kind of run against some of the bigger like comps that we're going to see in the in the format going forward so uh what we'll do now friends is we will wrap up today's episode with the rental card all right friends here is today's rental team as i mentioned at the start of the episode if you do try it out please uh i hope you have a lot of fun with it let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on the team and uh how much you're looking forward or maybe not so much looking forward to series 11 now it has kicked off and dynamax is back so as i said earlier we will be featuring a team every day this week and they'll be the sample teams going forward um i'm not going to do them all in one video i think it's more beneficial to do them in their separate videos and then have a couple of games of the team talk about the team it gives you a bit of an insight a bit of background behind the team how it's been a function and hopefully a little bit more help in getting started in the new format um, and more in particular for those that haven't played the format before but it will benefit those that have played before and it just gets you up to speed and um, hopefully gives you something to kind of jump in with if you haven't done already but friends thank you so much for tuning into today's episode hope you've enjoyed it we'll be back tomorrow with I think Groudon on tomorrow so looking forward to that one uh, more Venusaur though but that'll be it for the rest of the week no more Venusaur after that so don't worry about it if you're not the biggest Venusaur fan but as you know I think Venusaur is the goat so I can't get too much Venusaur we'll be also doing some stream this week so we will be streaming uh rank ladder uh, at some point this week and we have a uh, emerald inclement emerald nuzlocke that we're doing as well um so we are just past roxanne and we've got brawly up next as a gym leader so can we get two badges in it hopefully 
you should check out the stream when it's up. We'll get the schedule out at some point, uh, either today or tomorrow, for the rest of the week. And uh, when they go up, hope to see you there, friends. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.